Hello everyone, alternating a bit here with the unboxing and assembly of the Korg MS-20 reissue, also known as the MS-20 kit. Let's do it. basically comes down to three small boxes. This will be a synthesizer in about two hours. That's the, that's the estimated time. We'll see what happens. Hopefully there's a manual here. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Yep. Yep, so I'm going to spare you a lot of this. You're going to catch me at the various stages that I decide <laughs> to share. Yeah, all right. We're ready to go, right? Just start playing right now. Maybe not. This is where the fun begins. Okay, right now I am in the what I would like to call the oh my god, what was I thinking stage. <laughs> it says to check for par uh, for parts contents to make sure everything's here, and I'm getting these things out, and I'm like, oh my god, what am I thinking? But anyway, I'm sure I'll get through this. I just, yeah. No, I don't have static-free gloves, so I'm using rubber ones. I don't know, it just feels like the right thing to do. Oy. I have to say, even though I have a long way to go, this is probably the most exciting part. Well, maybe not the most exciting, but the one I've been most curious about, and that is the actual keys. Installing the keyboard part. Just not to be very careful what I do. Actually fun. <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a kid building a Lego set. Just, you know, step by step, follow the instructions. I don't know. It's pretty fun. These rubber bushings, as they call it, um, they didn't really explain which way to put them in. I guess they just assumed you'd know. So I had to get online to see um, this, you know. Japanese video of them putting together. They only show you like one quick push, you know, in between each thing so they didn't want to bore you to death like, you know, some people could. So anyway, I figured out that it's the flat end. It's the way I thought it would be, but I just want to make sure because I don't know what these are for, really. So you just kind of like massage it in. You, ow, you really have to I didn't get that one in right. Who would have thought that, that, that just this little rubber thing would be so far, one of the hardest things to deal with, it's just, you have to kind of really press it in there. You know, I'd also like to point out that the directions did not specify where exactly to put the washer. They just assumed that you would know. And maybe the average Joe does, but it just says, um, align the holes into the bracket and secure the with two screws and washers. That's all it says. Two screws and washers. I could put the washer on the other side between the plate. Obviously, I wouldn't put it on the outside of the plate. But I saw the video. I looked at the video, and luckily I knew that it was on the front panel, and that's where the, uh, the washer goes. So, yeah, the instructions could be a little bit more detailed. Uh, maybe they're just more for engineer guys who 
usually deal with this kind of stuff and would know that the washer is here to kind of protect the surface or or whatever but that's where the washer goes in between the screw and the panel it does say not to over tighten any of these so I'm being very careful just to have a just a slight tug to it and just enough not to be loose Trying very careful not to scratch the panel. It comes with a little buffer of like some kind of paper or sticker. This is definitely one of the cooler stages because it's uh, working on this clear panel that covers the circuitry and I don't know, you just kind of like get that sense like we're almost getting there. Um, I'm still gonna have to do another whole round of these nuts once it goes through the front panel, but still definitely getting close. I was just thinking about how like, uh, there's a great documentary on synthesizers that the BBC did called Synth Britannia. And one of the um, band members, I think, I don't remember who, but said something about how just when synthesizers were just barely becoming affordable, um, that you would get this kit you know, that was sent, and I think he said something like, you know, no instructions are really difficult or whatever, but the point is, is that's what made it affordable. Not the case with the Korg MS-20 reissue. It's not uh, cheap, but nevertheless, uh, it's kind of neat to be able to take part in probably what they were going through. I can't imagine it being uh, more complicated or more raw than this, but you never know. In case you're wondering what these bowls are, it's to separate all these screws so they don't get lost and they're, you know, they're organized. Anyway, so um, this is probably one of the most gratifying stages, I guess, except for the end, but anyway. Assembling the front uh, panel to the actual keyboard itself. So, see how this goes. We are now in the belly of the whale. So this is the uh, mod wheel cable actually that gets um, just kind of clamped behind this nice convenient wire holder. And, oh wait, orientation is important. Of course it is not a perfect world and I did uh, come across a snag and the, the bottom screw here, the hole didn't quite align with the metal all the other ones did except this one. So I actually did that one first, trying to get it in there, and in doing so, I think it affected this top one. And now this one, the threads are bad. I can't get this screw all the way in. I'm gonna try really hard now, but I try to I try to get out with, a, um, with needle nose pliers. I even used a cloth to twist it, but of course, still managed to get a little damage there. So not happy about that, of course, but um, hey, I don't even know if this thing works yet, but so we're gonna try to tighten this thing manually now. Looks like it's going in. Good. Now let's try this bottom one. Okay. This has got to be by far the most fun part and simple, of course, is putting the knobs on. The knobs are actually really cheap plastic. I've dealt with better knobs before, but hey, if this is the Korg MS-20 knobs, that's what they are. You just, you just push them on. Boom. <laughs> so, just pushing these knobs on, onto the body, onto the chassis, knowing what will happen next. The one thing, and I saw someone else complain in a forum about, uh, as far as um, build structure, is the mod wheel. Most most mod wheels are used to having a little bit of a um, kind of a pull back when you let go, like it'll snap back. This one is very loose. You can you can feel a little notch where it goes in the center to have it centered, but it just it's kind of like just there. But again, um, this is supposedly exactly how the original was built. When the Mini came out, 
just like a year or two ago, the Korg had a mini version of this synthesizer, and everybody was excited about it and gobbling it up. And I was like, um, that'd be cool, but I don't like those little toy keys. They had, you know, those tiny little keys. And then it had the tiny jacks, the kind of Euro rack cable type jacks. And I'm like, no, I want the real deal. So I didn't, you know, I passed up on it. Well, little did I know, about a year later, they'd come out with this. Very happy about it. And finally, the assembly of my Korg MS-20 is complete. And now to see if it powers up. We have lights. That's good. <laughs> I guess I'll have to start uh, messing around.